This video is created by Jagrat Creations. It is on liquidation of companies. I want to solve one sum here before you on liquidation of company. Observe the sum on the screen which I intend to solve. This is the sum that I intend to solve. This sum was asked by the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India in one of its examination conducted. Let me read the sum. The position of valueless limited on its liquidation is as under. It shouldn't paid up capital. 3 lakh, 11% preference shares of rupees 100 is fully paid up. 3,000 equity shares of rupees 100 is fully paid up. 1,000 equity shares of rupees 50 is 30% paid up. So it is partly paid up. And against 50, 30 is paid up. So 60% amount is paid up. While in case of 3,000 equity shares, 100% amount is paid up. Calls in areas 10,000. Calls received in advance 5,000. Preference and dividend are in areas for one year. Amount left with the liquidator after discharging all liabilities is 4 lakh 13,000. So cash balance available with the liquidator is 4 lakh 13,000. Articles of association of company provides for payment of preference dividend areas in priority to return of equity capital. You are required to prepare liquidator's final statement of accounts. Now see, all liabilities are paid. The amount yet to be paid is to preference shareholders and equity shareholders. The cash balance held by the liquidator is 4 lakh 13,000. So first payment is to be made to preference shareholders. They are 3 lakhs. The preference shares hold 11% dividend. So on 3 lakhs, 11% dividend, 33,000 is a dividend outstanding. So first payment will be made 3 lakh 33,000. Out of this, 4 lakh 13,000. After that, remember, Calls in areas are to be collected and calls in advance are to be repaid. So after making payment to preference shareholders, we are required to pay calls in advance and we have to collect calls in areas and the cash balance available with the liquidator is for like 13,000. After doing this much, we should decide how much payment is to be made to these two classes of shareholders where the face value of these shareholders is different. The first 3,000 shares, 100 each. 1,000 shares, 50 each. So we are required to distribute cash to the equity shareholders in a manner that loss of capital to both the categories of capital is uniform. Let me start with liquidator's final statement of accounts. So here I prepare liquidator's statement of accounts. I will start with the cash balance available with the liquidator. 4 like 13,000. Now let me first write down Recovery of calls in areas. And let me write down calls in advance. But I can't I can't pay calls in advance in this fashion. I am required to pay in priority the preference shareholder capital and the areas of dividend for that I have kept the play, place. And as I, as I have explained to you, I am going to pay preference share capital in priority to call payment to calls in advance. Because calls in advance are paid to equity shareholders. Well, preference shareholders hold a priority for payment. So, this calls in advance cannot be paid first, but it has to be paid after you make payment to the preference shareholders. Let me make payment to the preference shareholders. But as I knew that I have got 4 like 13,000 sufficient funds and the amount payable to preference shareholders is 3 like 30,000, so I can write in this fashion because of my understanding. So, preference share capital 3 lakhs, areas of dividend for one year. 3 lakhs into 11 percent for one year 33,000. So this is the payment made to preference shareholders and calls in the advance are also also being paid. Now let me find out the cash balance that I hold. So 4 lakh 23,000 minus 3 lakh 38,000. So this is the cash balance that I hold. Now this cash balance is to be distributed between these two categories of shareholders in a manner that loss of capital occurs to each of them is uniform, peri paso. For that purpose, I prepare, prepare one member and a cash account, in which I am going to write down this balance. Notionally, I will demand the last call on all the categories of shares. The first 3,000 shares under is fully paid, so I can't demand anything from them. So, amount demanded from this 3,000 shareholders nil, this is 
नो स्टॉल डिमांड जीरो रुपीज आर डिमांड वेन आई कैन डिमांड ऑन दिस वन थाउजेंड शेयर ट्वेंटी रुपीज सो वन थाउजेंड इंटू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड नाउ द टोटल कैश अवेलेबल टू मी इज वन लैख फाइव थाउजेंड दिस वन लैख फाइव थाउजेंड टोटल कैश अवेलेबल टू हंड्रेड परसेंट फुल्ली पेड टोटल शेयर कैपिटल नाउ लेट मी फाइंड आउट टोटल शेयर कैपिटल देन आई विल फाइंड आउट द अवेलेबल कैश विल बी डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड अमंगस्ट फुल्ली पेड अप हंड्रेड परसेंट फुल्ली पेड अप इक्विटी शेयर कैपिटल एंड आई विल फाइंड आउट रिफंड पर वन रूपी सो वॉट इज पेड अप कैपिटल नोस्टल पेड अप कैपिटल थ्री थाउजेंड शेयर थ्री लैक्स वन थाउजेंड शेयर फिफ्टी थ्री लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड इज अ टोटल पेड अप कैपिटल सो थ्री लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड इज अ टोटल पेड अप कैपिटल टू वीच आई एम सपोज टू डिस्ट्रीब्यूट वन लैख फाइव थाउजेंड सो ऑन अ टोटल थ्री लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड वन लैख फाइव थाउजेंड कुड बी डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड वॉट इज द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन पर वन रूपी ऑफ शेयर कैपिटल सो रिफंड पर रूपी वन लैख फाइव थाउजेंड डिवाइडेड बाय थ्री लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड सो आई एम सपोज टू रिफंड थर्टी परसेंट ऑफ द कैपिटल नाउ सी ऑन दिस फर्स्ट टाइप ऑफ शेयर हंड्रेड इज फुल्ली पेड अप थर्टी परसेंट कैपिटल इज टू बी रिफंडेड टू देम सो हंड्रेड रुपीज इंटू थर्टी परसेंट थर्टी रुपीज पर शेयर इज टू बी रिफंडेड सो ऑन थ्री थाउजेंड शेयर थर्टी रुपीज आर टू बी रिफंडेड सो नाइंटी थाउजेंड इज रिक्वायर टू बी रिफंडेड आई वॉट अ कैश बैलेंस ऑफ हुडली एटी फाइव थाउजेंड हाउ कैन आई पे नाइंटी फाइव थाउजेंड नाइंटी थाउजेंड फॉर दैट आई एम रिक्वायर टू डिमांड द कॉल फ्रॉम दिस शेयर सी दे आर सिक्सटी परसेंट पेड अप शेयर ऑफ फिफ्टी थर्टी पेड अप सो दे आर दे हैव पेड ओनली सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ द कैपिटल नाउ द लॉस टू बी सफर बाय ऑल ऑफ देम इज हाउ मच थर्टी परसेंट सो दे हैव पेड ओनली सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ द कैपिटल so 10% capital they are supposed to pay so that on 1000 shares on 1000 shares i can demand the money or if this refund per share is 30 rup 30 naira paisa per rupee so on first type of equity share 100 rupees you are required to make a refund of 30 on 50 rupees you are required to make a refund of 15 so on 3000 shares 30 rupees are refunded suppose no still refund 90000 so amount demanded nil we are required to pay them 90000 so 90000 is a payment is to be made here the amount demanded is 20 and we are making a refund of only 15000 so we have to demand 5000 rupees from this b category of shareholders so from b category of shareholders 5000 rupees are to be demanded and 90000 rupees are to be paid to a category of shareholders so a category of shareholders are paid 90000 and b category of shareholders from them we have demanded 5000 rupees what is the effect of it my liquidator statement is going to tell you that is the effect of it because i was having a balance of 85000 5000 demanded so it makes 90000 i have made a payment of 90000 so my liquidator statement is going to tell you but here on a share of 50 on a share of 50 see 5 rupees are demanded so 10% demand is made so they were 60% paid up and 10% demanded share of 50 30 paid up so 60% payment was made 10% demanded so they are going to and they are after demanding 10% from them they are not given given anything so their loss is 70% they have already paid 60% 10% amount is demanded so 70% is a total payment made by me and these are the 100% fully paid up shares on that 30% is refunded so they are also the sufferer of 70% so this is how both the categories of shareholders are the sufferers to the extent of 70% of the paid up value or they are going to suffer 70% of the face value in the event of liquidation so now if you tell this liquidator's final statement it should agree on both the sides 4 like 28000 is a total on both the sides this is how liquidator statement is prepared so i have tried to explain you this some one by ex- explaining the amount to be demanded and refunded on the basis of percentage basis and at the same time i have prepared here memoranda cash account where the nostal calls are demanded and nostal refunds are made and the difference between the nostal demand and nostal refund is being recorded in actual liquidator statement this is how the sum is being solved i have tried to explain you this sum i feel that you have followed all these things thanks to all